Hello, and welcome to my lair. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the Thick Stroke Plugin Autopsy. So, if you're like me, you're probably wondering why After Effects at version 17, it's 28 years old, and up until just recently, it didn't have a variable width stroke. You could only do a constant stroke, and Illustrator has had that functionality for how many years? And I was wondering, well, I mean, Adobe owns Illustrator and After Effects, so why is there no variable width stroke inside After Effects? And I was thinking about that, and probably, maybe one of the reasons is that all the After Effects shape modifiers have to play or interact with other shape modifiers such as trim paths and things like that. And so that makes it more complicated. Now you're not just making a variable with stroke, it's now got to interact with these other settings. Um, and doing some more research, I found out that creating a variable with stroke is really tricky. And essentially it gets trickier the thicker the stroke is. The really difficult parts are if you have really thick sort of edges where the um, curve sort of folds back on itself. Um, and then you've got to work out, you know, you can have round caps or butt caps and, and they sort of complicate that further. And when you're talking about really thick strokes, you almost have to visualize it as geometry and not just a 2D pixels because that sort of behaves like actual geometry. So when I was researching this, I found a guy from the University of Auckland who had created his own um, variable width stroke library, but it was in a programming language called R, which is really good for uh, data visualization. And this guy is a professor, professor of statistics, um, and he just wanted to make his graphs look pretty. And so he made his own variable width stroke library. Unfortunately, I couldn't leverage that, it being in a foreign language, um, and so, I was like, okay, I can't really do this properly. There's really smart people working on this problem and they're having issues, so I'm just gonna hack it. And I was remembering back to Bezier node where I was trying to uh, calculate the length of a Bezier curve. And I don't know anything about fourth order derivatives and such, but someone suggested just treat it like a bunch of straight lines. If you break a curved line into say a thousand straight lines, then just measure the length of all the straight lines and add them up and you'll have a very close approximation, you know, not perfect, uh, length of the Bezier curve. And I was thinking, well, what if instead of just measuring those thousand different lines, I drew those thousand different lines at different widths. Presto, thick stroke was born. Obviously, there's a lot of problems with this. It's very computationally expensive. Um, it's quite wasteful. Also, you're drawing geometry on top of geometry, and so that's why we needed the FXAA slider to sort of soften the edges, because otherwise you're gonna get these really crunchy edges where the geometry overlaps. Some other issues are if you have a really tight corner um, and you're using the butt cap, you'll notice it's gonna break down quite dramatically. You'll see that it's just a bunch of um, straight lines being drawn. Uh, the round cap does not have that problem at all, it's just due to the nature of it. Due to the way that I was drawing this with a thousand uh, normal straight lines, that lends itself to, well, now I can interpolate between colors because I can just draw each of these straight lines a different color. And so adding gradient along the path was really easy because I'm using this stupid hacky method. Um, it really lended itself to gradients along the path. And that's a feature that will be very interesting to see if After Effects actually can implement into their uh, tapered stroke because um, doing it properly the way they are, it would be very difficult for them to add gradient along the path and I don't think we'll see that for some time. Comparing thick stroke to the inbuilt tapered stroke now in After Effects 17, um, theirs is definitely a lot better, a lot more robust, a lot faster, the results are better. However, um, I think at least uh, at the recording of this video, you're limited to a start and end thickness. Whereas thick stroke, you can create as many points as you want along the line and, and change uh, the thickness of each one of those. Um, again, we have gradient along the path in thick stroke. You can use it on any version of After Effects after CS6 or CS6 included. So anyone who's not rocking the most recent pre-release can, um, can use it. During the development of the thick stroke, I wanted a way that the user can visually manipulate the size of each um, 
vertex or, or point. And I kind of, I was thinking, oh, I could possibly create my own custom GUI for this, but actually After Effects um, has sort of a tool like this called the Feather Vertex tool, which is essentially you can per vertex or not even per vertex, just along a closed path, you can specify different feather widths for that shape. And so I kind of hijacked that feature so that instead of manipulating the feather on each vertex, you can manipulate the size of the stroke on each vertex. And so that sort of allows you to then, um, this is what allows you to create as many different variable width points along a single curve as you like. The caveat being is that the shape itself has to be closed. You can't add the feather vertex tool to an open path. That's just um, an After Effects limitation. And another thing that I didn't realize when I was building it is you actually can't um, keyframe these. So, you know, you can set the feather vertex width, but you then can't keyframe it, which is a real pain. Like that's the point of After Effects. You should be able to keyframe everything. A way to try and get around that, we've added a um, width multiplier, which is just a slider that multiplies the width of all um, your paths. And you can sort of cycle that to create some trippy effects. But again, it's not as good as if you could then keyframe each uh, vertex. That's just a limitation of that, using that sort of hack method of co-opting the, the functionality of the feather vertex. So we haven't had too many feature requests. Um, one would be instead of just working on a single mask that it would work on multiple masks um, because you know that's just more convenient than creating multiple layers of thick stroke with, to, to work on different masks. Um, I think the gradient tool could be better. Currently it's limited to four um, colors, but you know some other plugins have better systems where you can it's you know you can add as many color points as you like. Um, but yeah, if you still have some more feature requests, let us know. It's still a work in progress. So during the development of Thick Stroke, um, I, I'd gotten pretty much towards the end. It was being tested by the beta testers and I was browsing the Adobe pre-release forums and um, it's, you know, After Effects is at version 17. Um, it's 28 years old. They still haven't implemented at this time, a, a variable width stroke. And as soon as I release my uh, beta test for thick stroke, Adobe, of course, implements their own version of a variable width stroke. And of course, theirs is better than mine because they're smarter. And um, at that point, I was like, shit, this plugin is not, it's kind of useless. What's the point? but I've invested all this time and energy into it anyway. So, you know, may as well release it, see what people make of it. And the response has actually been pretty positive. Um, we've had a lot of downloads. It's a lot more popular than our other plugins. Um, and we've just recently held a competition, you know, send us your coolest GIF or loop that you made with it. And we got some really great entries there. There is definitely interest from the community in this uh, plugin. So I have a theory that as soon as I had this plug into a, uh, like a, a working standard. I was pretty happy with it. Send it to the beta testers. Adobe was sitting there and they're like, this, is, this would be that perfect time to release that tapered stroke feature that we've had sitting in the works for 28 years that we just didn't bother releasing. Yeah. Adobe copied our tapered stroke and made it better. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Another feature request that we actually didn't get, but I just remembered in my head that would be a good, it's like sort of a feature request by myself is maybe um, motion blur. Currently, uh, if you keyframe the mask really quickly, there's no motion blur. And that's just because due to this really silly way that we're doing it, creating, adding motion blur is very slow and you may as well literally just add the CC force motion blur effect on top of it. Drawing motion blur is literally, if you have eight samples of motion blur, that is literally drawing the same shape eight times, but just, you know, at slightly different intervals. And so that will increase the render time by at least, well, by about eight. And then you've got 16 samples, that's 16 times. So I don't know, maybe just slap on RSMB or CC force motion blur for the meantime. Well, that's about it for Thick Stroke. Thanks for listening to my excuses on why I couldn't create a proper uh, variable with stroke and why I've just gone with the uh, hack solution. But I think the results look pretty good. You guys have been creating cool stuff with it. In regards to support tickets for Thick Stroke, I think no one's actually sent in a real support ticket. Um, so thank you so much. Um, 
if, if we get more support tickets, I might start up a GoFundMe um, to be able to handle all the support tickets because we're really struggling here, releasing all these free plugins and eating beans and rice. And yeah, you guys have just been really great, not just like bottling up your um, technical difficulties. And I really appreciate it. So thanks guys.